All right, let's dive in. We've got some seriously wild AI stuff happening today. Yeah, AI is everywhere. Pretty much right. Mm -hmm. Like healthcare, tech, even the Vatican, all getting in on this AI action. It's mind-blowing how diverse it is, right? Not just in labs anymore. Right. It's impacting, like, everything. Buildings, health, you name it. Yeah, it's wild. So first up, we got to talk about DeepMind. The AlphaGo people. Yep, those guys. They just open-sourced their protein-folding tool, AlphaFold3. Huge deal, right? I mean, I remember trying to wrap my head around protein-folding back in school. Oh, it's a beast. For years, scientists were struggling to, like, figure out how these proteins fold into these crazy 3D shapes. Super important for drugs and treatments because the shape determines how it works, you know? Makes sense. So AlphaFold basically cracked the code. Totally did. Nobel Prize and everything. And get this, they're sharing it. Seriously. With everyone. Pretty much. Imagine over 200 million protein structures all mapped out. That's insane. Think about it. Faster drug discovery, better disease understanding, maybe even personalized medicine. Mm. It's mind-blowing. Think about curing diseases that have been around forever. It's like sci-fi becoming reality. Totally. But there's this other side to it. What do you mean? Well, they started the spin-off Isomorphic Labs. They have the commercial rights to AlphaFold now. Interesting. So are they going to make bank off this? Oh, big time. They've got, like... Three billion dollars in deals with pharma companies already. Wow. But that raises some questions, right? Like, will everyone benefit equally? Exactly. It's something to watch for sure. Big time. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about AI that can code. Yeah. Coding for everyone, right? I wish I knew how to code. Alibaba's got this new open source AI, Quinn, right? Yep. It's like taking on the big guys, GPT-4, Claude, all of them. But Quinn is special. How so? Well, it comes in different sizes. You can choose the one that works for your computer. Smart. So it's not just for supercomputers. Nope. Anyone can use it. Plus, it's super versatile. Over 40 programming languages, generating code, repairing it, even reasoning about it. So even I could build a website with this. Yeah, theoretically, yeah. And the 32 billion parameter version. State-of-the-art performance. So it's not just a gimmick. It actually works. It's the real deal. Imagine anyone being able to create tech without knowing how to code. Yeah. The possibilities are endless. Okay, get this AI that can diagnose you just by looking at you. Isn't that wild? This Japanese team developed an AI that analyzes videos of your face and hands. Wait, what? How does that even work? It looks for tiny changes in blood flow, stuff we can't even see. So, like, my selfie could be a health checkup. It could be. These changes can actually show early signs of things like high blood pressure, diabetes, all that. That's crazy. So how accurate is it? Super accurate. 94% for blood pressure, 75% for diabetes, all from a five-second video clip. No way. That's incredible. So does this mean bye-bye to those awful blood pressure cuffs? Maybe. Imagine checking your blood pressure with a quick mirror selfie every morning. Where, like, your phone just, like, monitoring your health all the time. Exactly. It could be so much more convenient and lead to earlier detection of problems. It's like having a doctor in your pocket. Speaking of, what about AI outside of health and tech? Oh, yeah, totally. Like, get this. The Vatican is teaming up with Microsoft. No way. What are they doing? They're creating an AI-powered digital twin of St. Peter's Basilica. Wait, seriously? So, like, a super detailed virtual tour? It's way more than that. This digital twin will actually monitor the structure's health in real time. Oh, so they're using AI to help preserve this historical landmark. Exactly. AI can analyze tons of data from sensors all over the basilica, spotting potential problems before they get serious. That's genius. So it's not just healthcare and tech. AI is literally everywhere. It's becoming ubiquitous. We're just starting to see its true potential. AI is popping up everywhere. And there's so much more to discuss, so stay tuned for more of our AI deep dive. And it's not just, you know, buildings and stuff. We're also seeing AI being used to, like, preserve voices from the past. Really? Like how? Well, for example, uh, the estate of Jerry Garcia, you know, from The Grateful Dead. Oh, yeah, of course. They've partnered with a company called Eleven Labs. Okay. And they're using AI to recreate his voice. Whoa, hold on. So... Does that mean, like, we could have Jerry Garcia narrate audiobooks or something? It's definitely possible. They've uh, they've analyzed, like, all the nuances of his voice, mm-hmm. you know, right. and they can create these new recordings that sound just like him. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's kind of like bringing a piece of history back to life. It is, but, you know, it also raises these questions about, like, ownership and authenticity. Right, right. Like, what if someone used this to create fake recordings of, like, a, a 
politician or something. Yeah, that's kind of scary. It is. It's definitely something we need to think about as this tech gets more powerful. For sure. So um, shifting gears a bit, what about this whole artificial general intelligence thing? AGI. Ah, yes. AG like, can you explain that in simple terms? It's always sounded so complex to me. Sure. So basically, it's the idea of creating AI that's as intelligent as a human. Okay, so like an AI that can think for itself. Not necessarily think in the same way we do, but more like you see. being able to learn and solve problems like across all sorts of areas, not just one specific thing. Gotcha. So like not just playing chess, but also like writing a novel and composing music. Exactly. And this brings us back to that uh, that interview you mentioned earlier. The one with Lex Fridman. Yeah. He was talking to Dario Amade, the CEO of Anthropic. Oh, yeah. And Amade predicted that we could see AGI like as early as 2026. That's who. Yeah. It's just around the corner. And if he's right, then we're talking about some major changes. No kidding. But like, isn't that kind of terrifying too? Like what happens when AI is as smart as us? Well, it depends. The possibilities are uh, incredible. You know, imagine AI collaborating with scientists on cures for diseases. Right. Or composing like masterpieces of music and art. That would be amazing. Yeah, the potential is huge. But of course, there are risks too. Definitely. We need to make sure that AGI is aligned with, you know, human values and goals, mm. safety measures, ethics, all that stuff. It's like we're opening Pandora's box, right? Exactly. We need to be very careful. And speaking of Anthropic, they're actually doing something interesting. Oh, yeah. What's that? They're hiring an AI welfare researcher. An AI welfare researcher. What does that even mean? Yeah, it's a new kind of role. It's all about like considering the ethical implications of AI. Right. So as AI gets smarter, we need someone to make sure it's being used for good. Exactly. And it's especially important as we get closer to, you know, that potential AGI future. It's almost like, I don't know, science fiction is becoming reality. It is. And it's happening faster than we think. So with all this talk about AGI and its potential, it makes me wonder if we're even like keeping up with how to measure AI's progress. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's evolving so quickly, right? Totally. The traditional ways we've measured AI just don't cut it anymore. What do you mean? Well, you know, like those benchmarks and tests we've used in the past, yeah. they don't really capture the full range of what AI can do now, especially things like reasoning, problem solving, and creativity. I see. So it's like trying to measure a marathon runner with a stopwatch meant for a 100-meter dash. Exactly. We need new ways to evaluate AI's abilities, especially as it gets more sophisticated. So we need to, like, reinvent the ruler as we're measuring, basically. Pretty much. And that's where this whole field of AI benchmarking comes in. Okay. A lot of the leading AI companies and researchers are working on developing new benchmarks, new tests. That makes sense. It's a tough challenge, but it's crucial if we want to understand where AI is headed. So it's like we're building the plane as we're flying it, kind of? Uh-huh. Yeah, something like that. But that's what makes this whole field so exciting, you know? It's definitely wild times for AI, that's for sure. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like, we started with chess playing AI, and now we're talking about AI that could, you know, design life-saving drugs, compose music, even keep an eye on these ancient buildings. And this is just the beginning, really. Right. It's like, what's next? It's hard to even imagine, but one thing's for sure. AI is going to keep changing our lives in ways we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. It's exciting, but kind of scary, too, you know? Definitely a bit of both. Like, we've been talking about all these risks today, like recreating voices and making sure AGI doesn't, like, turn against us. And those are just a couple of the big questions we're facing. Exactly. Like, how do we make sure AI benefits everyone? Yeah. And how do we deal with the potential downsides? The job losses, the social changes, all that. Right. It's a lot to wrap your head around. It is. It's like uncharted territory. Totally. But I think, like, having these conversations is a good start. Absolutely. We need to talk about these things openly, encourage people to think critically. And, like, take responsibility, right? Yeah. It's not just on the scientists and the tech companies. Exactly. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI. And that's what we've tried to do today, right? Like, show you the amazing potential. And also make you think about the implications, the ethical side of it all. Exactly. Yeah. It's a complex issue, but it's one we all need to be involved in. So as we wrap up this deep dive into AI. Yeah, I think we've covered a lot. I want to leave you with this thought. As AI becomes more and more integrated into our lives. It's happening fast. What role will you play in shaping its development and its impact? It's a question worth thinking about because it's not just about the future of technology. It's about the future of humanity. Well said. 
That's a perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into AI. Until next time,